Remember this? It's a turntable. Used to play LPs, those long playing records, developed by Dr. Peter Goldmark of CBS Labs. They would spin at 33 and a third revolutions per minute. Now, even in these digital days, true believers have never given up on analog vinyl LPs. And today, they're enjoying some vindication. Talia assure us now with an audio counter-revolution. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. A CD? It's a disc? Hey, don't laugh! If you were born in the age of digital sound, you might not know exactly how this big round thing works. Um, it's something really old that plays music. And they're so huge because in those days, CDs hadn't been invented. And when you play it, it's, it sings music out. It's a record. And it's coming back. Vinyl records, yep. The same kind of LPs you listen to on a turntable have become, well, cutting edge again. True, the newer technology can put a thousand digital songs in your pocket, but for a growing number of music lovers, there's nothing like a real groove. Record labels are re-releasing vinyl LPs. You put it on this kind of machine and then it goes round and round. I mean, the old ages, uh, they used this instead of a DVD player. And just when were the old ages? The 1960s. Actually, he's right. The 1960s have been called the golden age of vinyl. That decade saw major advances in how the music was actually recorded but it still all ended up on a turntable. Steve Sheldon was a college student when he joined Rainbow Records in LA, back when vinyl was king, and the king was on vinyl. The busiest period for Rainbow was uh, 1977 when Elvis died, and within three days of his death, uh, we had booked about a million and a half records to be pressed. Our capacity at that time was 60,000 pieces a day. But in the 80s, CDs hit the market, and what some people argue was pure sound was trumped by convenience. Then a decade later, when computer downloads and MP3s burst onto the scene, it seemed as if vinyl LPs were on the fast track to oblivion. In fact, demand for vinyl declined significantly, but it never disappeared, in part because digital recordings just don't have the same sound. And that old-fashioned sound requires an old-fashioned, labor-intensive process. Technicians create the metal stamping plates one by one. The raw vinyl pellets are hand-loaded into the pressing machine, and each LP is packaged carefully by a gloved employee. Making compact discs is a different story. The process is high speed and highly automated, with a lot of the work done by robots. At Rainbow, making a CD costs less than half what it takes to press a record. But Steve Sheldon says he's banking on the future of vinyl. I think there's a good chance I'll be pressing vinyl longer than manufacturing CDs, as vinyl has a lot of legs. And for true believers, a medium that will keep audiophiles happy for generations to come.